So now we get to the women's divisions in the 2016 Olympic Boxing in Rio. Um, I'm just going to go over all three of the divisions here in one video. Um, do a rundown of the fighters in each of the divisions and who the, uh, the favorites to medal are. And so here we go. Uh, first off is flyweight, the flyweight division. Uh, for the women, it's a little bit different for the, than for the men. For the men, it's 52 kilograms or 114 pounds. For the females, it is actually 51 kilograms or 112 pounds. So it's actually more um, in line with the professional flyweight division of 112 pounds, which is the same for males and females. And we have, uh, competing in this division for the females, we have the returning champion, the returning gold medalist from 2012, uh, Nicola Ad Adams of Great Britain. We have Sarah Urma Uramone of France. We have Jaina uh, Shekerberkova of uh, Kazakhstan. We have Pam Wilai Laopeam of Thailand. Zora Ezzakrauri of Morocco. Mandy Bujold of Canada. Ingrid Valencia of Colombia, Ren Kan Kan of China, Yorgoroy uh, Mirzeva of Uzbekistan, Stan Stanimira Petrova of Bulgaria, Tatiana Kob of Ukraine, and Judith Mbugnade of Central African Republic. And uh, looking like the favorites to medal, of course, is Nicola Adams, who won the gold medal in the, in the 2012 Olympics. Um, she's competed all the way up as high as 125 pounds. So, I mean, squeezing down to 112 may be a little bit difficult for her, but um, she definitely makes use of uh, an overall strength advantage, um, if not a size advantage. You know, she's 5'5". Um, I'm not sure exactly if she's necessarily going to have a height advantage over um, her fellow athletes. Uh, there's a couple that are about her height. But um, just overall, uh, solid boxer. You know, she's won gold before. She's been, she's been there before. She won, of course, uh, back uh, when London was hosting the Olympics in the home country and everything. So she's looking to bring one home to the UK as well. Here. Uh, Mandy Bujold of Canada, who has won a gold in the 2011, uh, or the 2011 excuse me, Pan American Games at Flyweight and a gold in the 2015 Pan American Games at Flyweight as well as a bronze in the 2014 Commonwealth Games in the Women's Flyweight Division. Uh, she's looking to go in there and uh, try and upset the apple cart. Ren Kan Kan of China, who's uh, probably the most accomplished um, in terms of just medal count of the females, had a silver in the 2012 Olympics in London, so she actually lost in the finals to Nicola Adams, uh, looking to get revenge here. She also has a gold in the 2008 World Championships at light bantamweight, uh, weight class up from here. A gold in the 2010 World Championships. A gold in the 2012 World Championships. A silver in the 2012 Asian Women's Championships. And a gold in the 2010 Asian Games. So she's definitely been dominating in Asia and has been just slightly less than overall dominance in uh, the world level. So now getting to the lightweight division for the females, which is also known as 60 kilograms or 132 pounds. We have Adriana Araujo of Brazil, Katie Taylor of Ireland, Estelle Mosley of France, Mira Porkonen of Finland, Anastasia Belyakova of Russia, Asna Lashkar of Morocco, Michaela Meyer of the United States of America, Yin Junhua of China, Shelley Watts of Australia, Yana Alexeevna of Azerbaijan, uh, Irma Testa of Italy, and Jennifer Chan of the Federated States of Micronesia. I'm getting into uh, the, the people I'm favoring to win some medals, uh, and the, you know those who have won medals in the past, Adriana Araujo of uh, Brazil had a bronze in the 2012 uh, London Olympics. She's coming in here um, as the hometown hero, the home country hero, um, looking to try and do it big in Rio and uh, upset the apple cart against the next fighter I'm going to feature, Katie Taylor, who is actually the return champion from the 2012 Olympics. She won the gold in this exact division, um, representing Ireland. Uh, 
and she's basically coming back to try and uh, defend her title, uh, defend her uh, championship here. Michaela Meyer of the United States had a bronze in the 2012 World Amateur Championships. Uh, she's a USA Boxing National Champion a couple times over. Um, has also won the, let's see, what is this, the AMBC Continental Championships, uh, gold medal there. Um, she's competed at both 132 and 141, which is actually the next weight class up for the females, just like with the males, um, in spite of the fact that in the Olympics, they cut down the, the 10 weight classes overall to just three for the females. And then Shelley Watts of Australia, who has a gold in the 2014 Commonwealth Games at lightweight for the females. Um, coming in here trying to win another gold now at the biggest stage of all the Olympics. Now for the middleweight division, we have Clarissa Shields, the returning gold medalist uh, from 2012 of the United States of America. We have Chen Yin Chin of Chinese Taipei. We have Savannah Marshall of Great Britain. We have Nochka Fonchin of the Netherlands. We have Khadija El Mardi of Morocco. We have Ariane Fortin of Canada. We have Andrea Bandera of Brazil. Li Qian of China. Dariga Shakmova of Kazakhstan. Anna Laurel Nash of Sweden, Yaros Yaroslava Yakshina of Russia, and Athena Bailon or Bilon of Panama. And of course, uh, the star of uh, this crew is definitely uh, Clarissa Shields of the United States. She won a gold medal in the 2012 Olympics in London. Uh, she has a gold medal as well in the 2014 World Championships and a gold medal in this year, the 2016 World Champions chips at middleweight and she also has a gold medal in the 2015 Pan American Games at the next weight class up actually at light heavyweight at 178 pounds so um, she's a female that is definitely uh, strong for this division and she's proved that a number of times too she's had a number of stoppages in international competition you don't necessarily see a lot of um, a lot of knockouts a lot of RSCs essentially in the uh, amongst the females in particular in, in amateur competition due to the uh, you know the lower number of rounds and um, just um, the, you know, especially in the past with the headgear, she was able to knock a lot of these females out with headgear. Uh, Clarissa Shields has shown herself to be a powerful, powerful fighter. And um, she's, uh, she can be uh, pretty devastating in the, in the world level competition. She can crack, she can rock a lot of her opponents and just um, overwhelm them with sheer uh, strength, if not for all of the skills that she has as well. We also have, uh, of course, uh, Savannah Marshall of Great Britain, who has actually defeated Clarissa Shields before. She's the one female that's ever defeated Clarissa Shields. Um, however, more often than not, she hasn't quite got to the level of uh, winning golds that Shields has, has uh, managed to win. But she has a number of medals of her own. She has a bronze medal in this year, the 2016 World Championships, to go along with a gold medal in the 2014 Commonwealth Games, a silver medal in the 2010 World Championships at 69 kilograms, and a gold medal in the 2012 World Championships at 75 kilograms. And Ariane Fortin of Canada has a bronze in the 2014 World Championships at middleweight, a gold in the 2008 World Championships at welterweight, a bronze in the 2015 Pan American Games at light heavyweight, and a silver in the 2014 Games at uh, in the 2014 Commonwealth Games at middleweight. So she's a bit of a floater. She used to fight at welterweight. She's fought as high as light heavyweight. Um, probably one of the stronger females amongst uh, the top the top level uh, female middleweight contenders for the Olympics. And Anna Laurel Nash of Sweden, who um, is pretty much the veteran of this group, a 36-year-old who has a number of medals. I'll give you the rundown real quick. She has a silver medal in the 2001 European Championships, a bronze medal in the 2003 European Championships, gold in the 2004, 2005, and 2007 European Championships, silver in the 2015 European Games, 
And amongst her World Amateur Boxing Championship titles, she has a gold in the 2001 Amateur Boxing Championships, a gold in the 2005 Amateur Boxing Championships, a silver in the 2008 Amateur Boxing Championships, and a bronze in the 2012 Amateur Boxing Championships. So it seems, it seems like um, she used to be a very dominant fighter amongst the amateur females, um, has somewhat fallen uh, maybe into the second tier level, but you never know, especially with uh, crafty veterans, sometimes they can take advantage of uh, the overall lack of um, experience that some of the younger fighters have and are able to just outskill them or even uh, maybe trip them up early on and uh, make it so that they're not able to catch up quickly enough in order to actually take uh, the last couple of rounds, which is what's going to be needed in these Olympic Games with the three rounders. So that is it for the females. And that is basically it for my uh, Olympic boxing preview. Uh, that's pretty much it for this one. And um, I'm really anxious to, to see all these fighters uh, compete. Um, it's, a, it's a good look at some of the potential future pros. Um, to me, this is, I, I mentioned it in one of the comments to my videos, this is almost like the way the bowl games are to uh, the NFL or the way the March Madness is to the NBA. Um, a lot of times you'll get a chance to see some of the potential future bright stars of boxing. You know, you look at a number of the current stars or maybe the past stars of uh, the past uh, several decades and you'll see a lot of uh, Olympic uh, participants, whether or not they even medaled. Um, I mean, even just recently, of course, you know, you have the likes of Andre Ward, uh, Felix Diaz, Deontay Wilder. Um, I know Abno Mares competed in the Olympics. Vasyl Lomachenko, of course. Guillermo Rigandau, of course. Arsko Valdez. Competed in the Olympics. Alfredo Angulo competed in the Olympics. Um, just a, a number of, of fighters uh, that have uh, either achieved world championship level status, have been uh, bright prospects on the rise, even if they didn't necessarily meet uh, their all of their promise of being a, coming a world champion, or um, just um, some of the all-time greats, of course, even. And uh, it'll be really interesting to see. Um, you know, from the, being from the United States, it, it'll be fun to see if um, the Americans manage to start uh, racking up a couple of medals again. Uh, it's been largely absent, especially from the male side of things. You know, for the the females have been doing it big, but uh, the males definitely need to step up and uh, get start getting some medals again, since there hasn't been one since the bronze medal uh, from Deontay Wilder in 2008, and there's there hasn't been a gold since Andre Ward's in 2004. So that's uh, that's definitely needed. Um, and it, should any of these guys manage to get one, that'll be a big boon to their potential pro careers, big time. Um, but that is pretty much going to do it for my Olympic boxing preview. I'm going to try and do some recaps as the Olympics uh, take place. Um, although it may be a little bit tough because there's fights every single day from the 6th all the way through the 21st. You know, Every day of the Olympics, there's going to be fights, um, whether it's prelims. Uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the finals. Um, and then the finals, it's like each division almost, or, or it's like two divisions a day will have their, their final bouts. But once it gets into the semifinals and the finals, I'm definitely going to try and do some previews and recaps of those in particular. Because um, once you get to the middle rounds, to me, those are like uh, the, really the most important. The, the most important rounds to, to definitely get covered and give the guys props for managing to uh, bring home the bronze, the silver, and or the gold depending on who manages to get what. So that's it for me, guys, and I'll catch you guys on, uh, my, you know, on the regular boxing videos as well as uh, my recaps for the Olympics. And I'll catch you guys on those ones. Peace.